All right, you guys, so we are doing lesson 4.4, which is polynomial remainder theorem. In this case, the polynomial re remainder theorem, what we want to go ahead and focus is actually identifying the remainder of the expression. And um, in lessons before, we did see that we could do long division. I am going to be showing a different method today, which in this case is known as synthetic division. Synthetic division. All right. Now, in this case, what synthetic division is or how it works is that we actually have to use the coefficients from each of the terms in the original expression, which is p of x. So we have to use this coefficient, the negative 4, the 10, and the negative 7. And these are going to be lined up. So this is going to be a negative 3, a negative 4, 10, and negative 7. Now, notice in this case, guys, it goes x cubed, x squared, x, and then the constant. Um, if we did have a missing term here, we would actually have to place a zero for it. But in this case, none of our terms are actually missing, so we have the coefficients here. Now, in front of the negative 3, I do have a box. And inside the box, I actually have to find the value of x here. So this here is the same thing as saying x minus a 2 equal to 0. If we solve for x in this case, I will be adding the 2 on both sides. That makes x equal to a positive 2. So x in this case will always be the opposite of whatever linear expression you're given. So I will be placing the 2 in the box. Now, in this case, uh, starting off, I will be bringing down the negative 3. And what we're going to be doing in this case is uh, with the 3 down here or the negative 3, I'm actually going to be multiplying it into um, the number in the box. And whatever I get as my result, I will be putting it below the negative 4. So 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6. And in this case, in order for us to get our bottom number, we do have to combine these. Since these are the same signs, we are going to be adding them and we keep the sign. So that is going to be a negative 10. So let's multiply negative 10 times a 2. That's going to give us a negative 20. And once again, in order for us to get our bottom number here, we need to combine these. They have opposite signs, so we're actually going to subtract. So 10 minus a 20 is a negative 10. Once again, multiply this negative 10 by a 2. And we're going to go ahead and get a negative 20. All right, same signs add, keep the sign, and that would be negative 27. In this case, the goal of this problem was to find the remainder. We, want, we needed to find, in this case, the remainder here. Let me go ahead and erase that, put a different color. We were looking for the remainder here. So our remainder in this case, guys, is negative 27. Our answer is actually negative 27. So in this case, synthetic division can be used to rewrite the expression and to also find the remainder. Now, this is one way I could do it. Another way I could do this is I could actually do substitution. So that's the second method I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and do it over here. And we are going to do substitution. So in this case, guys, we already know what x equals here, and we want to go ahead and find the remainder. So in order for you to find the remainder of an, ex an equation here, we are going to be substituting this x value into the original equation. So I have p of x equals a negative 3 x cubed minus a 4 x squared plus a 10 x minus a 7. And in this case, guys, we found that x is going to be equal to a 2. So wherever I see an x, I will be replacing it with b2. So this is p of 2 equals negative 3 times a 2 cubed minus a 4 times a 2 squared plus 10 times 2 minus a 7. 
p of 2 in this case is going to equal a negative 3. Um, 2 squared, or 2 cubed in this case, is going to give us an 8. Minus 2 squared is 4. And then 10 times 2 is 20, minus 7. So let's go ahead and combine these further. Negative 3 times an 8 is a negative 24. Negative 4 times a 4 is negative 16. Plus a 20, minus 7. All right. <clears throat> now this is just how my brain works. I'm going to go ahead and combine both of these here. And that is going to give us negative 40 plus a 20 minus 7. Now let's go ahead and combine these two. That's going to give us a negative 20 minus 7, which in this case would give us a remainder of negative 27. Now, notice in this case, guys, it is the same thing as doing the synthetic division. Both of these do give us the same uh, remainder here of negative 27. So there are two different ways you can approach it to find your remainder. All right. Now, let's go ahead and see this next one. This next one is actually a problem you're going to do on your own. Um, and this is something that I did check. So it's part of a notebook check. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph here. Now, in this case, we want to go ahead and actually interpret either graphs or tables. And they're asking us, what is the remainder when p of x is divided by x plus 3? Now, in this case, we do have this graph. And I'm not sure what, what equation p of x is here, but it is a graph here. Um, and what I want to go ahead and do here is I want to go ahead and identify what x equals. In this case, we have x plus 3. If I make my equation here equal to a 0, then x is going to equal a negative 3. Now, with this here, I am going to be going onto my graph. And I'm going to go ahead and plot or see where x equals a negative 3. If we take a look at this here, this is where x equals negative 3. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. Now, in this case... Whatever y value this line crosses on the graph, that's actually going to be our remainder. So in this case, the line x equals negative 3 crosses at the point neg or negative 2. So then our remainder here, our remainder is going to be negative 2. So when f of 3 is negative 2. f of 3 is negative 2. So once again, that's just based off x in this case is going to be the opposite. I go where in the graph where x equals negative 3, and wherever it meets my p of x here, my graph, whatever y equals, that's my remainder. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. And in this next one, we have example 4, and for this one, uh, we have p of x equals x to the fourth minus 2 times x cubed plus a k x squared minus 11, where k in this case is an un unknown integer. So our goal in this case is to find the value of k. Now they are giving us two other things. They're giving us the um, expression we're going to go ahead and divide by, and they're also giving us our remainder. They're giving us our remainder here. So in this case, what they're telling us, uh, well, first of all, the first thing I want to do here is what is x equal here? Since x there, we have x minus a 2, x will always be the opposite, so that's actually a 2. So what they're telling us here is that when p or when x equals 2, our remainder will be a 1. Our goal in this case is to solve for k. So what we have to do in this case is wherever I see an x, I will be substituting the 2. And from there, we're going to go ahead and do something with the remainder. So let's go ahead and get started there. I'm going to go ahead and do p of 2 equals a 2 to the 4th minus 2 to the x, um, 2 times 2 to the 3rd plus k times 2 to the 2nd 
minus 11. All right. Now, in this case, guys, I know P of 2 in this case. We know P of 2 in this case equals a 1, so we are going to replace that with the 1. Now, 2, two to the 4th is going to give us 16. Uh, 2 to the 3rd is 8 times a negative 2 is a negative 16. And then 2 to the squared or 2 to the 2nd is 4, which is 4K minus 11. In this case, we're going to go ahead and combine our numbers here. And I could actually cancel both of these since those are just going to become zeros. And we have 1 equal to 4K minus 11. The goal in this case is to solve for k, so I'm actually going to go ahead and add 11 to both sides. And 1 plus 11 is a 12, equal to 4k. Final step in this case is we want to go ahead and solve for k, so I will be dividing by a 4 on both sides. So k in this case equals a 3. And that is our answer. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. All right, so in this case, we have P of X is a polynomial expression. So uh, P of X is divided by X minus a 4 and has a remainder of 2. P of X is divided by X minus a 1 and has a remainder of 0. P of X is divided by X plus 1 has a remainder of negative 1. And P of X is divided by X plus 1 has a remainder of 3. In this case, they want us to find the values of p of x, or the remainder in this case, when p, um, when x is a negative 4, and when x is a 1, negative 1, or a 1, actually. So, <clears throat> what we have to do in this case is, based on these here, and based on the information they're given, we have to identify what's the remainder, or which one they're actually talking about. So, p of negative 4, whenever we're looking at these here, these actually represent the opposite. So starting off with um, x minus a 4, this one here, the opposite of that would actually be a positive 4. x minus a 1, the x there would be a positive 1. x plus a 1, x would in this case be a negative 1. And x plus 4, that would be x equals a negative 4. So we're basing off our answer on these ones here. So this is telling us when x is negative 4, the remainder in this case is a 3. And when x is equal to a 1, our remainder is going to be 0. And that would be the answer. So it's either interpreting graphs or tables. And let's go ahead and take a look at this last one. It's similar to the one we just saw right now, just in a different format. In this case, uh, when x is negative 3, our remainder is 0, when x is 0, remainder is negative 1, and when x is 3, remainder is 5. So it says, what is the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus a 3? In this case, let's go ahead and see what x equals here. And x in this case would be the opposite, which is a positive 3. If we look here, this is when x is a positive 3, remainder here would be a 5. Now on this one, it's divided by x. So x in this case will be equal to 0. Place where x is equal to 0 is here. So our answer there is negative 1. 